Hi and welcome to another video in the RHCSA video series. Today's video is on modify the system bootloader. And what do we mean by system bootloader? So the system bootloader in uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 and pretty much 7 and I think 6 as well, they use GRUB2. GRUB stands for a Grand Unified Bootloader and not uh, version 2 of course. And this is just a, a very small piece of code that allows you to boot up um, various different operating systems. So you will actually call the kernels and uh, all the uh, initial RAM disks, etc., to bring up the actual um, operating system. So it supports all kinds of file systems, uh, including like NTFS, like uh, what Windows uses, it supports um, Linux ones like ext3 and 4, XFS supports uh, master boot records or MBRs, or and even GPTs or GUID partition tables. And it supports Windows, all kinds of Linux uh, distributions, all Linux distributions, and nearly all Unix-like operating systems like Mac, Mac as well. So it's extremely flexible solution, um, and it's yeah, obviously something that's used in Linux. You need to need to know a bit about it. So most of the time it does its works it on its own but you put, don't need to touch in uh, very often but you may need to tweak a few settings uh, there may be an instance where you're having a particular kernel update and it's not booting after that so you can roll back the kernel version um, changing the kernel you're booting with uh, using grub so you may be uh, familiar when you do a uh, an update using dnf upda up, uh, update you may notice that when you reboot it next time you get a list of different kernels and actually actually coming from grub that screen yourself seeing there is grub giving you all the different kernels so i can just reboot this vm and we will see the grub screen okay this is grub itself and you can see the list here uh, so it's giving us three re most of the of the most recent kernels so it'll be zero one two and then there's uh, the rescue uh, as well. So a rescue instance is obviously trying to uh, rescue a system when there's, there's some kind of corruption or issue. So you can actually do that. And you also can edit the um, configuration on the fly. Uh, I've done it in previous videos for stuff like booting in single user mode. But yeah, you can just click edit E to edit and you can edit stuff on the fly here. So you can see it there, it's booting, it's calling this kernel version you got the VM Linux, you can see all the where the root is, uh, root directory is, and uh, you've got the swap, um, it's got some uh, various settings there for uh, LVM, we can see it's got RG, RHGB, so it's got the uh, Red Hat boot window, and it's in quiet mode, so it won't, uh, it won't show all the uh, information as it boots up. And you can see the initial RAM disk there, and the way it lo where it's located, so you can see the actual image there. And the information there. So yeah, you can see just how it boots up. I can escape that and just press B to boot or enter. Sorry, and it'll boot up back as normal. So obviously, I could, for instance, here, like I mentioned that earlier instance, I could just select a different um, kernel if we're having a particular issue after an update, for example. So as part of this, we will need to modify the Grub bootloader. Um, to change a few settings and as part of the exam they may ask you to I don't know, make a small change somewhere maybe change something from 0 to 1 in the grub config um, it's normally things are very simple so I will just show you the there's only a few uh, options to edit and I can show you how to edit those and we'll make those changes and then write those to the grub config so as always into the terminal if you're not already and we need to be as a root user so sudo bash or the like cool so there's a quite a comprehensive grub2 command line uh, you can just do grub2 and tab tab to get a list of all the different uh, options so you can have like you can do lots and lots of things you could have like even backgrounds and things like that you can change the configuration of how it looks and what the prompts are, you can do loads of stuff, you can even set passwords to change it, stuff like that. Uh, but we're going to make very simple changes as part of the exam, so we don't have to go too crazy. 
we can do edit environment and then list so these are the environment uh, entries that we always have so one of the things like you got this kind of options I showed you earlier uh, so there's the list there so we can make changes there if we wanted to we can change the um, boot options save entries etc so we could say let's do a uh, let's do a set default Oh, sorry, grub2 set default default and then we can say this is to set the default um, kernel we're going to book boot with let's say 1 so that's going to set the next next time it boots with grub it's going to set the kernel uh, it's going to select the second option on the kernel which is 0 and then 1 which is the second one okay let's make a simple change to the grub configuration um, so we use something like VI or Nano to make the change and we won't be editing the configuration file directly because that's obviously pretty dangerous so you don't want your system not to be uh, to be unbootable so we generally edit the um, etc default rub and that's a com uh, basically a configuration file away from the main configuration file and then we use a, a make configuration uh, command to actually to overwrite the current boot configuration with the new values that we're going to put in so let's do that so this is the values here we've got so we've got the grub timeout so that's the how long it takes um, how long it counts down before it actually just boots the default option so five seconds is generally what we we want uh, you can disable the sub menu so you can have additional menus and stuff like that um, how it's going to uh, put the output so you can obviously there's obviously so many different options in grub it's very 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 flexible as i mentioned earlier so let's create a new one uh, so we've got the grub timeout so let's do grub underscore timeout underscore style oops style and we can change currently it will be set to menu is what we see that you know we get the um quite a few different options on the list and uh, we can go select different kernels we can just do we could do hidden if we wanted to to completely hide the grub timeout so just you just see a black screen for five seconds and it'll boot uh, continue booting or we can do a countdown it's it's just I'm just going to do this for example really I wouldn't probably use this in real life but yeah we can do a countdown and then we can write quit okay and then to write this configuration we need to do grub to mk or make config minus o for output and then boot and then grub to and then grub dot cfg so that's going to make the configuration to the output file in the boot directory because that's where grub is stored on the system because obviously that's the special that's a special directory that's mounted completely separate that allow is a it's just a reserved space in your disk normally about 500 megabytes or so that stores the boot configuration and that slash boot slash grub to slash grub dot cfg and it will basically verify my configuration file is correct and then write it to grub uh, all being no major errors it should just say success looks good okay so we can actually have a look if you wanted to so go boot grub to and then grub dot cfg and you can see it's got a, a big warning do not edit the file <laughs> it's using the settings from etc group grub so it's it's got a nice way to just repoint you back to where it is but yeah it's pretty programmatical um not overly readable um for pe people that don't write bad, uh, shell scripts or anything like that but it's there you can have a look and as i mentioned earlier uh, You can see that it's mounted separately and it's just on dev sea1 and it's got a slash boot directory so it's a special directory that's there so if we do a reboot now and as you met, met, saw before we had the menu option this time we shouldn't have any option it's just a kid and get a little countdown let's try a reboot let's see what we get see five four three two one and boot there we go so we've edit, successfully edited the grub bootloader and you can see the, the small change that's happened there. So yeah, that's
pretty much it in this. There's you will have they'll give you a variable you need to enter and you'll need to make that small change in the grub bootloader. They may say, you know, add a new variable and I give it this x value, or they may say this current variable we need to change the value to three or two, whatever. Okay. That completes the video. Um as always I've popped my details there so on the screen now you've got my T public page to buy merchandise if that's something you're interested in uh, my Kofi page for any donations of which I've had a couple recently I'm very appreciated uh, appreciative of that uh, thank you um, it's it's much appreciated um, that they come in and finally I've got the um, discord I've created uh, just a server for anyone to ask questions. Um, happy to answer questions anytime, as, as uh, obviously within reason. Um, I'll try and help out where I can. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching my videos as always, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks again.